Good morning, good morning everybody and uh, I hope everybody have a great Tuesday morning. I wanted to make this uh, quick update video for Yom Shlishi for Tuesday. Behind me as you can see I am in the airport. I am uh, wrapping up a very significant uh, trip here to uh, Midland Texas I have arrived right before the Shabbat and I am leaving today I can share with you a little bit about my being here and and so forth today uh, it's been uh, just terrific terrific few days here um, we're really really excited to announce that Keilat uh, Bet Derech in uh, Midland, uh, Texas, has been joining us at Avatami International to our Shuvu network of congregations. We are uh, really thrilled to take uh, Beta Derech under our spiritual care and help the wonderful community here to grow uh, in various areas. So. This is a big deal to take uh, uh, more communities, more and more communities under our spiritual care and help to see them grow. And we don't take it lightly uh, when opportunities like that arise. But I want to take a moment and to welcome Kilat Bet Derech. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's a fairly large Kila. Uh, made out of uh, mostly non-Jews who really love the Torah and really want to take this this journey to the next level. And God is giving us this opportunity now uh, to help them in this journey. And they recognize that they do need their Jewish brothers. Otherwise, it's kind of a little bit weird if you're not connected to Jewish people. And their leader, um, Ben Burton, who is a just wonderful, wonderful guy, uh, is uh, also going to take some classes in our yeshiva. He's joining our yeshiva, and we certainly welcome him and and everybody who is joining us. Uh, this has been a significant weekend here, as you can imagine, and I'm asking you to really be in prayer. Uh, I don't take lightly at this point, part of our network is about 30, 30 different communities and it's growing since November and it's, it's growing by the day. Uh, the amount of communities that uh, want to grab to the tzitzit of the Jew and walk with us and, and be under this, this umbrella. And um, I don't take it lightly uh, at all. And when they approached me, I was very cautious about this because a lot of time we see uh, Gentiles who wants to join the House of Israel, but they want to join it for different reasons, different motivations that are not always the motivation that I think the scripture speak of the joining to be part of the salvation of uh, Israel. Good to see you. So, uh, but this is a rather unique case. It's a unique case because I tell you why it's a unique case. It's a, it's a case of Gentile congregation, uh, a large one who really want to have the. It's here we go. I apologize. The network is not always that that that's great here, but. They really want to take upon themselves this heart of fruit. So we met with their board and they, I heard their heart and they also heard my heart. I, I don't seek to uh, Judaize uh, Gentiles or as some said to make them Orthodox Jews. That's not our vision. That's not our goal here at Avatami International. Uh, later on today, there will be a video uh, interview um, released with Ben Burton. I hope everybody who is not Jewish will, Jewish will have a chance to listen, listen to that because it, it, it is 
something that we do and, and I hope we wish I, I hope and wish we stop doing it uh, painting uh, people in such a broad paintbrush if you are a Gentile and you love Torah it means that you must become an Orthodox if you're Gentile and you love Torah you are going to renounce Yeshua you know those type of things and I can tell you um, they are very painful and very hurtful to a lot of people and one of the things that I am going to do that's where I feel that where my role is is to defend to defend uh, congregations like that and to protect them and to facilitate their growth because their growth is uh, precious it is part of the Geula and, and the sad thing about it is that the normative Jewish world understand it much better than the Messianic Jewish world that seems not to understand what God is doing right now. So I want to challenge everybody today. Don't let anybody to put you in a box. Don't let anybody to label you. Don't let anybody to tell you, you know, you, you can't. Can go this far, but you you cannot go further. That that's to me is a sin, and it's inviting trouble. It's inviting things like the Hebrew Roots Movement, as an example. All of this is birthed out of pain. It is the truth. So we we have a very unique uh, uh, situation, and I had a chance to really hear the heart of uh, Ben Burton and his uh, lovely wife Leonore and they're bored and they really were asking us to take them under our care and help them to grow so it won't deform and not grow to something weird and of course we we heard their heart and we said yes so now you know where i've been in for the last four days meeting teaching uh, preparing uh, significant things for Purim and for Pesach that we're going to make known to you here in the next um, few days. So I just want to say to everybody who's watching us uh, from both Midland and uh, in this kind of category of a non-Jew, of a non-Jew who is coming closer the, the, you, have, you, have to, you, have to, you have to understand that you are part of a prophetic move of God. This is really what it is about. You're part of a prophetic move of God, and it's happening all over the world. Um, in 10 days or so, I'm going to be uh, in South Africa. I'm going to be teach, teaching in Johannesburg. And from there, I will be uh, in Zimbabwe. And from there, I'm going to be in Korea. And I can tell you, although the people are in different ethnicity, they 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 are in different, they look different, and they sound different, they speak the different. The spiritual makeup of the bride, the spirit, the true spiritual makeup of the bride is the same. Friends, don't make it a race thing, don't make it a color thing, make it a spiritual DNA thing, because this is really where the heart of God is. He's raising a beautiful bride that is from every nation, tribe of tongue, and they're all coming up to Jerusalem. They all have a unique path and unique world, but they all are going to end up in the same place. And to me, it's a beautiful thing to experience and to see this. And here's the key for all of this. Are you ready? The key for all of it is you, we speak so much about the dome. And if you remember, I've just finished this yeshiva about Edom. What is the core issue of Edom? What was the core issue of Esav? What was the core issue of Edom? Uh, the, the letter, the, the, the book of Ovadiah, written by an Edomite, where Ovadiah is actually highlight for us the core issue of Edom. Well, what is the core issue of Edom? I'm going to tell you what it is. Because it's the one thing that I think we must be watchful for and to must be careful of. 
you know what it is it is pride it is pride and as you know i'm coming home for one day and tomorrow we are leaving to uh uh las vegas and when i say we it's more than myself oscar salinas is going to be joining me the entire family is going to be there and we're launching a brand new synagogue Bet Shuvu is, is launching in Vegas this, this weekend with this big, big yeshiva for Haman, Esther, and Mordechai. I want to decode this weekend with you the book of Esther. It's something I've never offered before. And a matter of fact, I've been working on Megillat Esther publication for a long time i was sure that i'm going to get it done this year but you know how you see how my schedule is i cannot always do what i want to do because i'm running out of time but this weekend going to be so special and so amazing and i want you to sign up if you have not done it it's a two-day deal it's a saturday and a sunday those yeshivot going to run Saturday afternoon until Avdala, and it's going to run on a Sunday uh, uh, for a few hours. So it's events.chuvu.tv forward slash Purim. Make sure you sign up for this because, you know, I, I'm going to give you a hint. We're talking about this pride. We're talking about Edom. The one thing about the book of Esther that I want you to... Uh, to understand is that nothing this is one thing I want you to think about I hope you come to the yeshiva but if you cannot come to the yeshiva I want you to remember what I'm about to tell you are you ready nothing in the book of Esther is what it seems nothing Esther have two names Mordechai have multiple names Haman has different names nothing is what it appears to be. And here's the question I want to plant in your mind as we're getting to the season of Purim. It says that King Achashverosh has raised Haman for a very high level. Above all the princes, he raised him to the very high level. And this verse about him being raised to a very high level is the secret of the entire redemption. Why did King Ahasuerus raise him to this level? Who King Ahasuerus represent? Who Haman represent? Who Mordechai represent? Who Esther represent? All of those things are things that I am going to be teaching. And I'm going to give you a hint. Okay, here's the hint. It's connected to a dome. All of this is connected to a dome. Start doing a research where Haman came from and do a research where Esther came from and you are going to be stunned what this book of Esther is a metaphor for. The entire book of Esther is a metaphor for Acharit Yamim and for the last days. And I can't wait to put this content in your hands because you will be able to understand you will be able to understand the last days in a different way and it's coming back to what I just spoke about pride being humble all of those things pride and humility and and what God is doing right now even in the world this is a book for today here and now I think we all understand that we are in Acharit Ayamim. We all understand that there is a final battle that is coming up. Do you all understand? I was reading this morning the Israeli paper, uh, and I think it's not a coincidence. Again, you see what's happening in Israel. Everybody sees right now we are on the brink of a civil war in Israel. In a, truly on the brink of a civil war, not just a war with our... Uh, neighbors but even among ourselves and at the same time that we are in this war the seismologic 
uh, society telling us that an imminent earthquake is coming to Israel. What's the connection of those things to Megillat Estel? The entire principle, even Moses has prophesied on Megillat Esther. Did you know that it says in the book of Deuteronomy, Esther, Astir, Panay. There is two layers of the hiding of the face. Esther, Astir, Panay. So we're going to see even what the Torah has been prophesying is a connection to Esther. So this weekend I want you to join me and understand that these days we are living in the day of Esther. And by the way, it's not a coincidence that the story of Megillat is there taking place in Paras. Paras is the modern day Iran. And that's also not a coincidence. One of the things that I want you to understand though about these days ahead is God is going to deliver. I love this word from the from the Megillah. And we're going to open the Megillah, friends. One of the things that I'm doing this weekend, I believe, if God allow me, I will bring Megillah Esther with me. Maybe I will be able to bring it with me. We will see. And we're going to decode it together. You know what it says in Esther 4? 4, 14? It says that help is going to come from another place. The one thing that is important for us, especially now during the month of Adar, which is a month of preparation. Adar Aleph, the name of God, Dar, Dweller. The Lord is the Dweller, which is going to lead us prophetically to the month of Nisan. Nisan from the word Nes, miracle. But Nisan is also from the word Nisayon, trials, tribulations. So one of those things that we are going to be experiencing is the miracles in the days ahead. One of the things we can expect for to see more and more is the visible hand of God. You see, we are going from the invisible hand of God, the concealed name of God, from Adar, we're going to a season that is the exact opposite, Nisan, where we see signs and wonders and miracles. So one of the things that I want you to really pay attention to in the days ahead, hey Shani, great to see you, um, is the visible signs, visible miracles, that will be a preparation for the time of Nisan. That's one of the things that we are expecting to see, are, are real clear miracles. But with those miracles, brothers and sisters, there's also going to be trials. Nisyonot, Nisayon. Okay, so one of the things that we have to watch for is the trials that are coming ahead of us. Do you know that the book of Esther prophesies clearly, and I'm going to show it to you this week, and I hope everybody sign up to the yeshiva, it's prophesies clearly the time of Jacob trouble. Do you know that? Not only that, it's, it's, it's prophesies clearly the Holocaust. It's prophesied clearly, clearly, the Nuremberg, Nuremberg trials. It's prophesied all of those things clearly. And we have to understand those things that we are already in the time of Tsarat Yaakov. Tsarat Yaakov, this time, we, we, we're already in it right now. But here is the thing. Help is going to come from another place. Here is a nugget I am going to tell you. I'm going to give you a nugget to get you excited about this weekend. And God is, I want you to sign up events.chuvu.tv forward slash pouring. Let me ask you a question. Again, this is a thinking thing. As you can see behind me, the sun is rising. That's when my plane is about to leave. But I want you to ask yourself this question. Where was Mordechai? Where was Mordechai? When the beginning of the story, was he aware in Shushan? 
How many Shushan there are? Now you probably think Shushan, there is one Shushan. I am going to tell you, there are not one Shushan, there are two Shushans. And I'm going to prove it to you this weekend. There is not one Shushan, there are two Shushan. There is a Shushan of the Jews and there is a Shushan of the Gentiles. Guess where Mordechai placed himself at? He didn't place himself in the Shushan of the Jews. Rather, he placed himself in the Shushan of the Gentiles. Is that some, some like somebody we know who went to be in the Gentiles in order for the intercession of the Jews? Is that sound like somebody you know? Yeah, I think you know who it is. We're speaking about the Mashiach who went for a season for the nations in order actually to intercede for the Jewish people. What was Mordechai's purpose in going to Shushan of the Gentiles? And I'll, I'll prove it to you all scripturally. What was he doing there? The rabbi said that he went there to prepare for the day. Remember in the end of the story that it says in Esther 8, 17, that the Gentiles Judaized themselves to be able to graft themselves to the house of Israel. Do you remember that? It is the parallel for what is going to happen in the last days, where 10 Gentiles are going to hold the tzitzit of the Jew. Zechariah 8.23. We have to understand the Megillah story through the end time context. And that's what we're going to do this weekend. And guess what? It's not just going to be done in English. It's also going to get become done in Espanol. So I'm going to leave to you the link today in this, um, in this broadcast, how to get your, yourself up and running and register. We have to prepare to the future, future in grafting right now. This is the ultimate purpose even for the calamities. Why God brought the calamities upon the Jews? You know what the, the commentator said? So that the Gentiles will be able to graft himself into the house of Israel. Is that amazing? That the troubles came upon the Jews so the Gentiles, and read in Esther 8, 17, so that they will be able to come on in through Mordechai, through Esther, through the two messiahs. We're going to look at that, friends. As you can see, the power just went out in the airport. That's never happened here before. But we're just going to trust God this morning. So let me release you today with encouragement as we're getting ready to the book of Purim, the book of Esther and Purim. Prepare with joy. Prepare and get yourself ready. I want to see everybody in the yeshiva this Shabbat. I'm going to be also teaching this in the morning. It's going to be amazing. Mazal Tov to Beit Shuvu, brand new synagogue in Vegas. By the way, if you're anywhere in the region, come. It's going to be amazing. Mazal Tov to Keilat Bet Aderech in Midland, Texas, who join. Formally, Avatami International, we love everybody very, very much who want to grab the tzitzit of the Jew and walk with the Jewish people. And we're looking forward uh, this weekend to see what Hashem is going to be doing through the worldwide decoding of Megillat Estelle. Uh, I wish you all really a delightful Tuesday. Go and meditate. On some of the things I told you this morning. Um, and we're getting ready because help is on its way. I wish you all shalom and blessing. And I am going. Next transmission is going to be from Vegas. Please pray for the staff that is traveling. It's going to be amazing. Next week, journey to Africa is starting and then to Korea. God bless you, everybody, and have a delightful day. Event. Period Shuvu, period TV, forward slash Purim. Go sign up. Shalom, everybody.